Okay, I'm back with you uh, from a uh, quite an extended time, but I've been working on my book. I've been distracted by many things, uh, plus, uh, of course, all that's going on with the virus and all the violence. Uh, it uh, takes your attention away from uh, what you're normally accustomed to doing. But I want to get back and give you an update. First of all, the book, uh, it's going to be probably another 60 days till I have the beginnings of it released to you, but it's working. We're getting there. So just uh, thanks for your concerns and your interest and hopefully your prayers. But I wanted to get back to <clears throat> dealing with this uh, coronavirus and the, the, uh, the violence in the streets now with the protesters and try to put it in, in some kind of of a context in light of all that we've been talking about here for the last four or five months, notwithstanding a break. But uh, the, issue, the issue of what we're saying in the world, these horrendous things that most people think are just the beginning of sorrows, <laughs> that's a whole other story I want to talk to you about concerning tribulation or the tribulation, but not, not today because I don't want to get into the eschatological aspects of uh, what we're what we're seeing today but i wanted to give us an objective view of of our times and where we're at uh just today you know uh so one of the scriptures that uh, i like to go to often is the one in isaiah it says come up here to the sky and then look down on the earth and uh, that that's what we need to do we we need to see from a higher objective perspective than what we're experiencing every day by how the news is reported to us because the news is basically living amongst the trees instead of seeing the forest and uh, you can get pretty much battered and upset and troubled by what you see every day and it is troublesome but how do we see this from on high and when i say on high i don't mean from an airplane i'm talking from i'm talking about this from the panorama of uh, time, uh, which is what I like to talk to uh, talk about quite a bit. In fact, my film, The Deep State Prophecy and the Last Trump, if you haven't seen it, it's free. Just go to my website, kenkleinproductions.net. Klein is K-L-E-I-N, productions.net. Click on it. You can watch it for free. and It'll give you some, some great objectivity and perspective on uh, our times. And when I say our times, I mean the times that we've been here as humans. So I'm talking, you know, thousands of years of time. And speaking of being as humans, uh, Jesus once said something really amazing when he was uh, confronted by the Jewish authorities of that day and they were going to stone him and kill him. Of course, they later did do that. But uh, earlier, before that, the, the time of his crucifixion, uh, he asked them, why, why do you feel this way? Why, why are you uh, going to kill me? What, for what good deed are you going to kill me? When they said, well, not for any good deed, but because you made yourself equal with God. You call yourself the son of God, making yourself equal with God. And that's blasphemy. And for blasphemy, we're going to kill you. Uh, because they had the law. You know, thou shalt have no other uh, gods before me. You know, the first commandment. So they were taking him to task on what they interpreted as his uh, breaking the law of the first commandment. But Jesus responded to them and said, well, it's written in your law and it can't be broken. Go read it yourself. He was saying, have not I said ye are Elohim, Elohim. And so here's these guys that don't even believe in him. He's calling them Elohim. And he was quoting a scripture from Psalms, I think it was 82 where it says, have not I said you are Elohim? And that's the law he was referring to when he said it's written in your law. But you will die as mere men. Mere men. So he's trying to tell them something about who they are. You are Elohim. And that's who God says you are. And I am. We are Elohim. And the word there, uh, Elohim, uh, means gods, plural. G-O-D-S, small g, G-O-D-S, gods. Have not I said you are gods, but you will die as mere men. Now, people have tried to interpret the meaning of that. And the only ones I found uh, that have done a decent job are the Mormon theologians. Uh, 
they're, I don't agree with Mormonism uh, in, in total, but they're hitting on something here. And God says he'll even speak out of a jackass if he has to, to get our attention. So uh, what does this mean? And it means that we, uh, if you look at all of the scriptures, all of the scriptures, he's trying to tell us something about who we are and what we've become. We've become mere men. Now, most of us think that Jesus died just for a bunch of rotten, filthy sinners. But Jesus came into this world to rescue Elohim. Elohim meaning gods. That before we were human, we were gods. In fact, if you look at the book of Job, this is exactly what it's saying. The morning stars sang at creation. Somehow, we have lost our memories of our spiritual history. And the only thing we have is to draw back to the Lord Jesus, connect with him and the heavenly sanctuary, which is another amazing reality that uh, is ours in Christ, is the access to the heavenly sanctuary that's mentioned in, in uh, the book of Daniel. It's mentioned in Revelation. We don't know how to really have a, a interaction with the courts of God. Uh, very, very clearly. Uh, basically, we see in a glass darkly and we don't know how to apprehend it or even apply it. But the reason I'm saying all this is because uh, what is the most significant issue that's, that's causing all of this horrible global pandemic and chaos? Why is this happening now? And what's God trying to say to us in all of this? And it has to do with the fact that we pre-existed as messengers. Now, the Bible calls messengers in the scriptures angels. We have a preconceived idea of angels, but basically we're messengers. We have a message to give. And uh, the message that we need to receive is what is called the gospel. But I don't like that word anymore because kind of stained glass. The word means the good message or the good story. What story then is the gospel? And I don't like that word, like I said. The good story is that we actually screwed up in the heavens. And because of that, we got involved in a war. It's mentioned in the book of Revelation, chapter 10. There was war in the heavens, not heaven, the heavens, which is the galaxies and the stars. And because of that, we had to suffer a penalty to learn not to screw up again like we did. And what? how do we screw up? Well, we stop following Yahweh-El. We stop following, following the Father, Yahweh-El, God of gods. That's the name Yahweh-El, means God of gods. Our Father is the God of Elohim, God of gods. And we are the ones that worked with him in the heavens to plant the heavens, and then our mission in the heavens was interrupted by a failure. We left our first love and followed a demonic force or a Lucifer who was an archangel before he became a demonic force. And he was, he was uh, deceived by a spirit in the universe called Gog. Gog, the Gog spirit is what we must not ever allow to enchant us again. And so we're here on earth to learn something and that learning is how to hear the voice of the Father, Yahweh. And by the way, that's the name Jesus said, to, uh, Father, Father, I've given your name to my disciples. You never find out what the name is until we look back into the scriptures and we find his name is, the, at least the best we can know of his name is Yahweh, Yahweh, the name of the Father. Uh, so the great story, the wonderful story is that we had to be banished from the heavens and come into this world as humans. And the Adam and Eve story I've taught on, uh, it's, it's just so mistaught in the churches that it's hard to really see, you know, the forest from the trees. But the good story is that God, because of the predicament and the hopelessness of being human, uh, in fact, uh, you know, that's why the law was given, to show us the hopelessness, uh, of our condition. How do we get out of this? We can't overcome. Uh, so he had to come here and overcome for us. 
And that's what his death's all about. And in that, we have to connect with his power, his glory, and uh, slowly transaccumulate his life in such a way that we gain in weight in his kingdom and therefore are more suited to go back into space, back into the heavens and plant the heavens. Now, I've said all this because I want to bring about one point, and that is the calamity that's coming over the world is due to the interruption of the redemptive cycle, meaning that Lucifer does not want people born into this world. He wants to stop human life. He wants to interrupt the cycle of life. And abortion is a classic interruption of the cycle of redemption. Because in order for us to get back to where we belong, we've got to pass through this life. We've got to find the Messiah. We've got to be, uh, the word sanctify, that word's getting old, old and pretty crusty. Uh, we have to transaccumulate his life here to become more suited for our travel and our mission into the stars. Because it says, have not I called you that I might plant the heavens? Well, that's what we were doing before this interruption, and we call it human life. So abortion is one of the reasons why God is lifting his hand from protection and why we're going through all these calamities. So I guess you could say it's God's judgment that's come upon us because we have not moved to arrest abortion, especially amongst black people who are highly called of God. Uh, God chooses the weak and the poor to be his candidates for glory. And it's the poor man that is rich in faith. The rich man is in trouble. It's opposite of the way we think. And so here we have uh, all this difficulty coming upon us because of abortion. And we, we, I don't know the answer of how it's gonna stop, but I can tell you why this is coming upon us because it's the interruption of the cycle of redemption. So I hope you can receive that and share it with other people. And in the meantime, I'll try to do more teachings as we go here. But uh, look for my book in about 60 days. Go to my website and watch the, the Deep State Prophecy and the Last Trump. It's very prophetic. And you'll get a handle on what's really happening here in our, our time with regards to the next uh, presidential uh, campaign and the run and who's going to be elected and all that stuff. So that's that's it for now.